Welcome to the fifth session in this series on Character Animator um, by Tim Kitchen. Take it away. Thanks, Abigail. It's wonderful to be back with South Australian Department for Education. I'm actually presenting from the Sunshine Coast up in Queensland at the moment, which is, oh, look, I, I hate to tell you, absolutely stunning. It's actually living up to its name. It hasn't been for a long time, but I brought some of Melbourne's sunshine up to the Sunshine Coast, and now it's blue sky and it's sunshine. I know things aren't quite the same in Adelaide at the moment because my family in Melbourne are really whinging when I say how nice the weather is up here. So I'm going to stop talking about the weather because it's not probably the best thing to talk about right now. Let's talk about Character Animator. I'm going to take over the share screen, Abigail, so we can get things started. Real-time animation. Yes, it is possible to do real-time animation. In the past, when you're doing animation, it's usually a really time-consuming and laborious task, whether it's digital, whether it's analog, it's always been time-consuming. But now we have an application that allows you to do animation in real time, which is just is such a valuable resource, especially for students who, who want to create something. I particularly like this app for students who don't like being in front of a camera. The students who don't like being in front of a class to present, they can actually use digital puppets to do all that presenting for them. And that's where it gets really exciting. So it doesn't matter what curriculum area you're focused on, to get a digital puppet to do the presentation for you in whatever it is to share the learnings, that's uh, incredibly valuable. Let's uh, jump into it. Let's see my slide deck, can't you have it? Am I sharing all right there? Yep, it's looking okay. fine. And I might skip uh, this section because we only have a handful of teachers with us live, so I don't really need to uh, find out too much more about your background because I've got a bit of an idea about that from the, from the discussion we had before we started the recording. But I would like to play this clip because this video gives you an overview of a lot of the Adobe applications in the Creative Cloud and Adobe Express as well that are used in education. Adobe is the global leader when it comes to digital creativity software. Adobe applications are used at the highest levels of the multimedia and communications industries, as well as in primary schools, secondary schools, and universities all over the globe to enhance digital literacy, communication, and creativity. Adobe Creativity Software is now divided into two special homes, Creative Cloud Express and the Creative Cloud. Formerly known as Adobe Spark, Adobe Creative Cloud Express is a set of very simple to use creativity tools that can be used by anyone in any curriculum area and level to build powerful graphics, video stories and web pages. Adobe Creative Cloud Express for Education also includes the powerful Adobe Premiere Rush video editing application, as well as Photoshop Express, and is totally free of charge for K-12 schools around the world. The Adobe Creative Cloud is the home of Adobe's well-known industry standard applications such as Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, XD, and a total of about 50 desktop, mobile, and web-based applications and resources. Other apps that are part of the Adobe Creative Cloud include Acrobat DC for creating, managing, and editing PDF documents and creating a paperless experience. Character Animator for real-time animation. Fresco, the ultimate drawing tool for the iPad and Surface Pro. Lightroom for outstanding photo editing, Aero for creating augmented reality experiences, After Effects for serious video effects and composites, and Audition for multi-track audio editing and podcasting. Get to know these applications through the Adobe Education Exchange. And I'm going to pause the video at that point because I want to emphasize the importance of this resource called the Adobe Education Exchange. For those who are with us live, I'm going to put the link into the chat so that you have direct live access to it. And I know many of you who are watching the recording and who are with us live have already had a look at the value of this resource. Just last 
last year, about July last year, we hit our one millionth teacher who's joined this as a resource. It's teachers helping teachers use Adobe tools in any curriculum area. And it's broken into three sections. You've got your teaching resources, you've got your professional learning, and you've got your community. And I highly recommend that you have a look at what's available. And then if you like something, you can go and sign in and join. There's no cost involved in it at all. And maybe eventually become part of the community that helps contribute great ideas that have worked in your classroom to the Adobe Education Exchange. I'll just keep going with this clip now. X.adobe.com, which now has over 1 million members across the globe with a wide variety of free teaching resources and self-paced on-demand professional development courses for educators. The Adobe Education Exchange is also the gateway to the Adobe Creative Educator Program. This is a multi-level badging program designed for any educator in any curriculum area. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an Adobe Creative Educator. Scan this QR code or look up adobe.ly slash edu events to find out more about coming events that Adobe is running for teachers and use this QR code or look up adobe.ly slash contact edu apac to get in touch with the Adobe education team or subscribe to their monthly newsletter. Please let your colleagues know about what is possible with Adobe's amazing tools to enhance digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. And that last link that I've put into the chat, that contact, does give you an option to join the newsletter. And once a month, I send out news, information, resources, ideas for teachers. And I know many of you are already on that newsletter, but if you're not, then I recommend you join that email list and just get a, an email from me once a month or actually a newsletter from the global team. But that newsletter only has the top maybe five or six stories, and then it clicks a link to the full newsletter, which is coming from my website, timkitchen.net. So uh, that's probably worth joining as well. Now, I'm just giving you all these resources in case you need to jump out at some point before we go into the software and play, because we're really only going to be scratching the surface on one of many, many applications that are available to you. So I wanted to make sure you have the resources so you can go and investigate more and see what's relevant for your school. Abigail, I think there's a few questions there that maybe you need to help address in terms of getting access. Can I leave that with you? You might be on mute there, Abigail. Matthew, I think I might email you after this, if that's okay, to try and address those issues. Terrific. Now, let's uh, have a look at Character Animator. What I'm about to do is play to you a video that is like the ultimate end product with Character Animator, where I've incorporated myself and a digital puppet. And in fact, I'm going to get three digital puppets to explain what Character Animator is all about. Not everyone's going to get to this stage of the process, but I want to show you during the session how we can get started with Character Animator to potentially produce something like this. I've asked a couple of Dr. Applesmith's friends to join him and tell us a bit more about how Adobe Character Animator works. Here is Dr. Applesmith with Chloe and Red Monster. Adobe Character Animator is really cool. Um, oh, thanks, Red Monster. Adobe Character Animator is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud set of applications that is available in many schools and universities. It allows you to create real-time animated sequences with either built-in puppets like me... Like me. ...or with puppets that you build yourself with Photoshop or Illustrator. Like me. Dr. Kitchen, you did say that this was our sequence. Oh, sorry. I'll leave you to it. The reason why it's so easy to use is that puppets mimic your movements via a webcam. As you move your face, your puppets move with you. As you talk, your voice is recorded and the puppets mimic your mouth. As I said, Adobe Character Animator is really cool. Character Animator also has a great feature called Characterizer that can turn anyone's face into a digital puppet in seconds. Oh, cool. Does that mean I can turn my face into a digital puppet? Red Monster, you are already a digital puppet. 
Oh yeah, good point. Anyway, Adobe Character Animator can be a simple to use and very effective application for K-12 and higher education teachers who are looking to provide a creative and engaging way to communicate curriculum content. It's also great for students at any age who are looking for a new and creative way to share their knowledge in any subject area to their teachers and classmates, especially if they're not so keen on standing in front of a class or being in front of a camera. That's right, Chloe. It gives some students the opportunity to have a voice when they may be very shy or have a disability that prevents them from communicating normally. As I said, Adobe Character Animator is really cool. Back to you, Dr. Kitchen. Thank you, Red Monster. Thank you, Dr. Applesmith, and thank you, Chloe. Always great to have them helping me with these presentations. Now, I want to start with a brand new version of Character Animator that's only just come out in beta form. It's a very simple, easy to use, uh, cut down version of Character Animator. So I want, to, I want to start with that. First of all, I want to show you how to get access to it. On this slide here, you can see we have a, a section on the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app called Beta Apps. So they're apps that we've made publicly available, but they're not quite ready to be part of the fully fledged Creative Cloud yet. So I'm gonna jump in and show you where to get that. So if I, I'm opening up my Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. And if you wanna, wanna know where to find that, if you just do a search on your computer for Adobe, that should be, that should be one of maybe only a handful of apps that you've already got on your machine. And just about every school system now, uh, they give you this app, and then they might actually give you Photoshop or a couple of maybe Acrobat by default. Or uh, the reason why they give you this app is so that then you can manage which apps you want to install on your machine or not. So you can see there's the, the desktop app. So I'll just bring up my little pointer so you can see where my cursor is exactly. And at the top center here, we've got all the desktop apps. And you can see they're all sitting here, Photoshop, Illustrator, Acrobat, InDesign XD. And this is where you can install them or uninstall them or open them and manage them if you, that's the way you want to do it. And there's lots and lots of them to have a look at. And we've already run several sessions on a number of these apps during the year. And then up the top center, you've got mobile apps. And I'll just stop the point now. So you can see there's a whole range of apps for iOS and for Android that are available to you through the Adobe Creative Cloud. A lot of these are supporting apps that support the full apps. Then you've got web apps and resources. And these are all apps that are browser based. And we've spent a fair bit of time on Creative Cloud Express or Adobe Express as it's being changed into rather than Creative Cloud Express. And uh, there's a whole range of applications there that are based uh, on browser use. So if you've only got Chromebooks, these are the apps that um, are most relevant to you, for instance. The beta apps on the left hand side, you can see we've got different categories of different apps. When we go right down to the last category, there's beta apps. If you click on the beta apps, this is where you can get access to the character animator beta. Go ahead and open it. You can do it now if you like, but it'll probably be take a little while to install depending on how much Wi Fi you've got. So while you're doing that in the background, let me show you what it looks like when you've got it opened and installed. When you first open it up, it actually does look like the full version of Character Animator because it brings up a whole range of digital puppets that you can work with straight away. But as soon as you open up and click any one of these puppets, that's where things change and really get simplified. I'm going to click on Bill Starter just because I like the look of Bill. Let's see what happens. Oh, I had, had trouble with Bill last time too, so maybe, maybe I might choose another one. Yeah, that going to bypass that. Sorry, Abigail. Abigail, is there any questions in the chat that we can deal with while I quickly fix up this issue? I did tell you this was a beta app. So there's going to be little bugs along the way. No, it's all good at the moment. And uh, so I'm not quite sure why that is. Oh, actually, do I have? No, no, I haven't got the other character animator opened up. All right, um, I'm going to have to avoid that demo and just use the full version of Character Animator. What I will tell you though, is that this cut down version is so much easier. If you find the full version when I bring it up, 
gets complicated really quickly, then this will be the solution for you. But there are also lots of limits to this as well. So for instance, if you had the puppet up, you could hit this button here that says record face or voice, and you could just very quickly do a real-time recording of just the face. The eyes would move, the mouth would move. As you move your head, the puppet would move its head. And then all of the all of that recording would be on this timeline. And then you'd get some actions that would appear on the right-hand side, and you'd click on the actions and drag them into the timeline for where you want them to work. So it might be a clapping hands, it might be a wave. And so by doing all those actions, then you've structured all the actual animation. And so it's not exactly real-time animation with this version, but it's pretty close. And then you just simply go up to the top right-hand corner where it says share or the share icon. And then you can export that as a video file and it goes directly into um, an MP4 video. Really basic, really simple. You can adjust the backgrounds. You can adjust the, um, uh, the file resolution, whether you want widescreen, whether you want like a TikTok type video. And that's about it. That's about as, as complicated as it gets with the beta version. So I'm going to force quit my beta version because it's obviously not doing well. I might have to uninstall it and reinstall it again before I do my next demo on Character Animator. But I'm going to bring in the full version now of Character Animator, which is the main one. It's been around for a few years now, and uh, it's a very popular application. It was actually built by the Adobe After Effects team. And they realized they had this tracking technology that they use for a lot of video effects, that they could kind of reverse the technology and instead of you tracking an object, you ended up tracking the using the webcam to track you. And then you became the object. So I'm just bringing it across to my, I'm using my iPad for the shared screen. So it's just a little bit smaller resolution. That's why it looks a little bit different than what I would normally do. But there we go. So let's, uh, let's hope we get this working. I'm going to choose one of my favorite characters, which is Dr. Applesmith. And when I click on Dr. Applesmith, hopefully he will appear on the stage. Oh, no, Abigail. The beta version is publicly available, so everyone can potentially access it. And it's just brilliant. And it might be all you ever need in terms of real-time animation because the full version, as easy as it is to use for basic animation, it does get a little bit tricky after a little while. So I want to... I want to show you the beta version and hopefully Abigail will have more luck than me. Hopefully but it's I, going to open for me. It doesn't, it doesn't want to open at the moment. Um, let's give it a second. It might be thinking about it. You definitely closed down the other version, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that shut down. <laughs> this is uh, it's not. opening up on my other screen. So oh, is it good? <laughs> All right, we'll get there. Sorry, folks, sorry, this isn't quite as slick as it normally would be. But I guess it's always good for you to see that even the experts have issues at times. All right, thanks, Abigail. Now, um, choose Bill, we might as well. It might take a little while up the top there. you got the red shirt. There he is, Bill Starter. Yeah, I unfortunately, I don't think I can give you control of my No, no, you're, you're doing a great job, Abigail. You're just going to be working a little bit harder than you expected to be. All right. Now, t your camera, um, you, hopefully it will pick up your camera. So what you can see now is Bill is about to appear on the stage and it hasn't picked up your camera there, maybe, because your camera is off of teams. So that um, a little bit. See, is there a setting I can go in? and change. Yeah, I'm not sure where it is on the beta version. I normally would see your picture on the uh, top right hand corner. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. We go. All right. Now, um, can you just move, tilt your head left and right for us, Abigail? Mm, that's not, not picking it up. It should pick it up. See the bottom right hand? Just, yeah, calibrate. Click on calibrate. There we go. There we go. Nice. All right. 
So in your best Bill voice, <laughs> I'm going to get you to click on the record face and voice. And before you do, um, I want you to say something like, hello, it's Bill here. And uh, in fact, go to, go to the back. Let's choose a different background. You can choose your background. See next to Calibrate, there's a little background button. That's it. Click on that. And there's a whole series of backgrounds here. This will determine what our story will be. We can't, at, in the beta version, just at this stage, we haven't got the ability for you to add your own backgrounds. We do in the full version, obviously, but uh, so just choose a background that you think might appeal to you, Abigail, and then we'll determine a story around that. Oh, lovely. That's so cool. So you're in the forest. And okay. it's, it's autumn. So tell us, Abigail, this is a quick little story. You say, Bill, uh, it's just about to be winter. In fact, what's the date? Today's the last day of autumn. And I'm really looking forward to winter. Say something like that for us, Abby. I'll give it a go. Today is the you'll, last. You'll get three seconds. Two, one, go. Today. Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> the selected audio devices have no input channels. Okay, so let's try again. Let's change that. it to uh, input. 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 Shoot, there we go. Headset mic. Beautiful. Third time three. lucky. Yeah. yeah. Give yourself three seconds after you hit record. Two, one, go. Today is the last day of autumn. I can't wait for winter to arrive. Abigail, you should be an actor. That's just <laughs> amazing. All right, now if you hit the play button, Abigail, or the space bar, just near his belly button, there we go. I don't know if I've got audio uh so did, when you shared in teams did you click on that audio button yeah it's you because did? i'm using the web version let me just try again uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like technical issues um, <laughs> yeah it's not letting me share the um can you go back to character animator and just right, check here your we go. let's try that again okay. right Let's try again. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Today is <laughs> the <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So take the playhead, that little blue line in the middle of the screen there. Take that back to the start of the timeline. And <laughs> can you t take your cursor over to the top right-hand corner where you've got the different symbols? And as you're hovering over them, you get the, a sense of what they'll actually do. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drag those symbols into the timeline. So maybe do a wave at the start. Thanks, Philippa. And just drag it onto the, there we go. And now that it's there, now if you hit the play button, let's see what happens. Today. <laughs> That's fantastic. And you can actually, Abigail, you can actually determine the length of that action by um, uh, trimming it. You can take your cursor to the end or the beginning of that action and you can decide how long that action is going to go for. So you've got a new action that you've added in. So hit the play button and just see what it looks like. It's the last day. <laughs> this is the best demo we've done for a long time. This is great. Now choose, choose another one. Not picking your nose, or are you? I hope not. There we go. <laughs> okay, and that's how we trim it. Yeah, that's how you trim it. And maybe one more action to finish oh, off. <laughs> uh, nice. The wind right, take, will arrive. <laughs> take the playhead back to the there we go. Today. Right. And hit the space bar or the play space. button. Yeah. Today is the last day of autumn. I can't wait for winter to arrive. Nice work. Excellent. All right. So you've done your basic story. You've added your actions. We've already put our background in. 
Um, next to the background button, there is a little aspect ratio button that allows us to turn it into a little TikTok, if you like. So click on that and just you can see your options. You've got you know, five by four, portrait, square, landscape. Generally, by default, you'll stick with landscape, but uh, maybe just choose one of those just to get a sense of what it will look like if it's in a different mode. And so that's that's what it would look like if it was a TikTok. So you wouldn't necessarily get as much of it as you want. So take it back to a landscape. And let's assume that we're happy with it and go to the top right hand corner where you've got your share button, click on that and do a quick export. You can just determine exactly where you're going to send it to. You know where to find it again. Actually, I might change that, otherwise I won't be able to find it again. Um, I'll just put it in my documents folder. There Someone's you asked how do you, yeah, some, someone's asked how do you delete uh, the then you just select the, uh, the action and then hit the delete button on your keyboard. But once you've exported, we will test that out. Yep. So it's now exporting, it's now building an actual video file from what you've created with Character Animator. And then we'll just test out how we delete an action in a sec. Uh, Someone said that's worked? Uh, Excellent. Terrific. Cool. All right, Abigail, I'm going to get you to quit out of the beta version now. Yep. And we're going to get you to open up the full version of Character Animator. And we're going to get you to do something similar. But you'll see there are, are a few differences. While we're waiting for the full version uh, to open up. Oh, dear. I had an error with my export. Um, oh, the export. Don't know. worry about the export. Yeah. It was just a, doesn't really matter. But um, whatever that error was, hopefully we'll be able to fix that another time. Uh, just checking the chat. Okay, looks like Gemma has been sorted. Feel free to ask any questions as we're going along. And maybe go to the chat now and tell us, where, have you been able to download the beta version and have you been able to create something just give us a yes if you have don't worry about saying if you haven't abigail has opened up the full version and she's automatically got dr applesmith already built in there we need Do you to, want me to go to the home oh uh, yeah go to the home because that's what will yep. normally happen when you open up character animator the full version there are a bunch of puppets you can work with straight away What's worth noting, if you scroll back up to the top again there, Abigail, is there are three sets of tutorials there that you can go through and just learn more. There's the starter mode. That, that takes you to the beta version, so you probably want to avoid that unless you want to use the beta version. Learn the basics is a nice set of tutorials, and then uh, there's some more online tutorials too that you can click on and, and enjoy in your, at your own leisure. I'm going to give you a link a little bit later that send you to, to some tutorials that I created specially for this about uh, two years ago. They're still quite relevant. The, the, the application hasn't changed that much in that time. Abigail, I'm going to get you to open up Chloe. Chloe is the third. There we go. That's Chloe. And you click on Chloe. Chloe has been around for a long time. Very well established puppet. And uh, there's a Photoshop version and an Illustrator version of Chloe. So it doesn't really matter which one you've got. You've got her opened up now. Now let's get your camera working again there, um, Abigail. Oh gosh. Yep. See the little ellipsis tool next to camera and microphone on your right-hand side? There's camera and microphone. Top right-hand corner. Keep going. There we go. Up a bit further. Up, 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 up. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. And choose the camera that you want to work with. That's it. You're in business now. Yep. Okay. Now center yourself so that your face is right in the middle of that circle. That's it. Or move the camera if you need to. And see the little calibrate button that's on the bottom. That's it. Click on that. And now you're fully calibrated. In fact, if you double click the camera and microphone symbol, uh, sorry, the camera and microphone that's it, double click that. That'll open up that window so we can see exactly what parts of your face are being tracked. Move your eyebrows up and down. Nice, good. Now click on the camera and microphone button again. 
And tilt your head left and right. Good. And to move Chloe's arms, you need to take your cursor over to one of the arms and you can click and drag. There we go. So what you can effectively do here is you can do real-time animation for all of the face and one of the limbs. Do you know I didn't know Chloe's legs moved? <laughs> I never knew that. Well done. I never even bothered trying to. to. Um, I might do a quick little recording now. What I'm going to get you to do is uh, say something like this. You're going to say, hi, it's Chloe here, all the way in South Australia. It's lovely to see something like that and get it to wave while you're while you're doing that with one of the arms and move your head at the same time okay i will give it a go okay ah, we've got issues. That's just need to... all right. um, wondering because the mouth wasn't moving yeah, there we go. that's better you get seconds and Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. Now look at the timeline down the bottom in a second. Oh, there should be a whole lot of layer. There we go. It took a little while. So you can see the audio has been recorded and every action has also been recorded in separate layers of the timeline. So if you hit the play button now, Abigail, we'll be able to see what that recording looks like at the moment. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. Now, Chloe's right arm looks a little bit awkward at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another recording, but this time we're going to turn off the microphone. And you can see the little mic. See the little, that's it. No, uh, turn, off, yeah, turn off the microphone and also turn off the camera so that we don't override what you've already recorded. And when you hit the record button, and it will actually start by moving her arm down by her side anyway, so it looks a bit normal. And then as you're recording, just do slight movements of the arm, just so, so it is actually moving a little bit. Okay, let's give it a go. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. By the way, it's Character Animator. Just, yeah. Apologies. Okay. Under the pressure of the moment, that's okay. So take the play head back to the start and hit the play button and we'll be able to see what it looks like. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. Lovely. It's amazing how you can do that without blinking. And um, I'm just wondering, see that on the left-hand side, there's a series of controls and triggers. If you hit the, the S key on the keyboard, will that do some blinking? Let's just see what happens. Let's press the S key a couple of times on your keyboard. Are you actually clicking the S key on your keyboard? Yeah. Oh, okay, not, not working. Um, what we might do then is we might record you blinking because those triggers should do something. What's that say? Not the, maybe Chloe hasn't got blinking. Uh, she does have a uh, blink. Is it's got B? B. Um, Try B on your keyboard. Uh, Here we go. Beautiful. All right. So do another recording now, and every so often just hit that B button. Let's give it a go. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. I didn't see any blinking there. Did it, let's just play it back and see if it worked. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. And so were you actually clicking the B button when you did that? Yeah, record? so it, it shows on my screen. It might just not... Uh, Oh, you were seeing blinking, were you? Yeah. I'm, oh, okay. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a refresh rate thing or something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that worked. All right. So our recording is basically done. What we want to do now is we want to bring in some sort of background so that so that Chloe is um, you know not just standing there in a in a white background. So to, to do that, what I'll get you to do, Abigail, is maybe just jump into 
Um, go into Adobe Stock, go into a browser and just type in stock.adobe.com. This is live, so <laughs> anything could happen. Doc, um, Maybe and I should take my browser out of view. <laughs> Maybe. Right. Uh, go to the free images. At the top, there's a there's a button that says free, because not every school would have licenses to Adobe Stock. Some will and some won't. So free is always the way to go. And then just type in Adelaide, because that's what you're referring to. And let's see if there's any lovely free images that relate to Adelaide. Oh, look at those. Fantastic. Uh, so choose one that you like, that you think would be a nice background. Let's go to Brighton Beach. Nice. Uh, license for free. License I for free. Yeah, and that'll end up in your downloads folder. So that'll take a few seconds to download because they're, they're really high res, great quality images. And that's the beauty of using Adobe Stock. Adobe Stock not, not only has images, it also has video files, it has 3D assets, it has audio files. It is like a one-stop shop for resources when you're a video producer or a content creator. In fact, I happen to know, Abigail, that Channel 9 use Adobe Stock nearly every night for their news service. So if they haven't got an image that they that they have taken themselves or they haven't got from overseas or something like that, they'll always go to Adobe Stock. And I notice that every so often I notice that Adobe Stock assets are being used. Now, um, assuming that's downloaded, is that? Yeah. Yep, Can great. I just so, drag it across? It's not that simple, unfortunately. <laughs> so what you need to do is go up to the top left-hand corner where it says File and go to Import. And then go in and search in your download section for what you just downloaded. There we go. And then click Import. And now it's appearing at the top left-hand corner under the heading of Name. It's a whole series of assets that are there. One of them is called Adobe Stock. Now you can drag it. So if you grab that asset called Adobe Stock underscore something, I'm telling you something, and just on the left hand side, left hand side. Hang on, what have I done? Left hand side. There assets. we go. There we go. There we go. Click and drag that onto the stage, and it will override everything that's there. Now at the moment, it's it's scaled too big. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the right hand side, and you've got a section called or it's under properties. If you if you look down under the transform options, there's a scaling tool. It just says scale, not scale X or Y, but normal scale. On the right hand side, there's a percentage sign. If you click, hold and drag, no, just click away again. Click, hold and drag, and you can drag left or drag right. And oh, what have you done there? You managed to. Oh, you're on negative. That's what you've done. <laughs> you, you dragged too quickly. You might have to go to, there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's drag a little bit slower until we've scaled it the way we want it scaled. That's lovely. Beautiful. Now we need to get Chloe in the front because at the moment that's meant to be your background and it's hiding Chloe. So look at your timeline and look at all your layers. Can you close down all the layers that represent Chloe by clicking that little arrow that's next to the word, that's it. Click on that, good. So now you can just see three basic layers. You grab the Adobe Stock one at the top, drag it to the bottom behind Chloe. There we go, now Chloe's in the front. Now, we wanna make this look a little bit more realistic. So now that you, if you go and click Chloe's layer, highlight Chloe, beautiful. Go back to the transform tools, and I'd like you to use the Y position and scale the Y position, use the percentage symbol there to drag Chloe so she's dragged down, not up, but down the other way. That's it, the other down. That's it, good. Now use the X position to drag Chloe to the left a little bit. So we'll apply the rule of thirds here. Keep going a little bit more. That's it. That's beautifully balanced now against the backdrop. Now hit the play button. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. Animator, Abigail. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great, and that might be exactly what you're looking for in terms of just creating a short little video that you're going to add to your PowerPoint deck, or you're going to add it to a project for your students, or your students are going to add to help demonstrate something. 
what I used to often do actually is I'd convert certain slides from a PowerPoint deck into images, bring them into the background and get my puppet to point to different parts. And then my puppet would actually present that slide instead of me presenting that slide. And it added a whole new element to the presentation, which was a lot of fun. Abigail, if we wanted to make this into an actual video, what do you think we'd do? How would we export this? Okay, Are you can we do that. Do so, the share? Yeah, you could do that. Yep. Otherwise, you'd go to file and export. Now, this is it gets a little bit more complicated. You notice in the beta version, there was just one option and we made it into a video, which didn't work for you, but that's normally what would work. There are two, there's several options here, but if you go to the first one, and that is export video via Adobe Media Encoder, yes. and click on it now because it will take a, a few seconds for a media encoder to open up. It's going to ask you to save it first, so just save it into a, a location that you think you'd be able to remember yes. to refer yeah. back. Okay, so save there. But what's happening now in the back end, this application called Adobe Media Encoder is being opened up, and it's a great application because it allows you to encode or create a video into any format no, that you want. So you get total control, whereas the beta version is it's using Adobe Media Encoder, but you don't realize it's using it, and it's only allowing you to save it as an MP4. You might want to save it as some other file format. So you've got all those options with Adobe Media Encoder. While that's opening up, it might open up on a different screen there over go. When it does, just bring it across to the shared screen. The other option there was export video with alpha. And Abigail, I'll just get a mute your microphone for a second to get into background noise. And uh, export video with alpha via Adobe Media Encoder. I won't get you to press it now. But let's say you've got a situation where you want to not have the background. You want a transparent background. All you want is the puppet. And you want to then bring that puppet into a video editing solution like Premiere Rush or Premiere Pro and maybe have a second puppet that you create, or maybe a third puppet. And remember that video I played at the start where you had me? I filmed myself on a green screen. So there was me, and then there was Dr. Applesmith. And then next, then there were three separate puppets. Now, to do that, you had to export just the puppet and no background at all, bring that into your video editing solution into a, into a layer, and then bring your green screen of you into another layer, and then maybe bring the other puppet into another layer. And then it's all about timing. There's a lot of preparation involved in scripting and in getting the timing absolutely perfect. So Because when you're acting, you're talking to nothing. It's like doing a CGI experience in a movie making where those actors are so clever at talking to what's a monster, but the monster's not actually there. In this case, you're talking to a puppet that's not actually there. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Now, Abigail, you have now got a medium coder. Can you click that little line? in the queue section that um, represents your project. See all the blue text? Just click anywhere in there. So we're highlighting that. Just click anywhere in there at all. Maybe maybe between the two. I think you just double click, did you? Turn your microphone on again now, Abigail, so I can hear you. Um, maybe click. Yeah, I think you double clicked. So close that down. Close that down. So maybe the grey area between the white, uh, between the blue writing, anywhere in there. So now you've clicked on that. Now on the top right hand corner, there's a little play, a little green play button. You click on that, that'll start now encoding your video, and you'll see a blue line appear somewhere that tells you how long it's going to take. Here we go. It's starting to come up uh, towards the the top. There, there's a there will be a line it's taking a little while here we go you can see the blue lines down abigail have you got a whole lot of applications open i think I have um my computer is running very low on space in my c drive so adobe isn't coping very well at the uh, <laughs> so it's always advisable to to only work with character animator and not have any other applications open because media encoder will open up as well and at the moment, uh, Abigail's got Word open, she's got Excel open, she's got OneNote open and various browsers. So that's why it's so slow at the moment. But it's getting there and you can see the blue line is progressing. A little bit of advice, the more you try and drag that blue line with your mouse, it doesn't make a difference. Just let it go, go and have a cup of coffee and have fun with it. But eventually that's how you build 
the uh, the video and you'll end up creating a, um, a video file from what you've animated. So it's it's not as simple as the beta version, but there's a lot more features in it and you get a lot more control over it. And I guess you decide what, which, which version do you want to have your students exposed to and, and so on. The beta version will get better and better as we make it um, a little bit better and better. Uh, the full version will also just get more and more complicated as we add more features to it. Abigail, while you're loading that up, can I get you to go to a browser and search for YouTube? I want to show you some really good ways that Character Animator is being used. In actually, look, I might I might do it because you're running out of <laughs> you're running out of processing power. So let me just jump into YouTube and I'll share my screen in a minute while that's going on. And if you ever do a search in YouTube for character animator and um, well, anything will come up. So um, the one that I want to play for you is there's a great comedian in America who runs the late show out of New York called Stephen Colbert. Hopefully you've heard of him. He's very, very clever. Um, I'm going to do a search for character animator and Donald Trump. Now, Abigail, your video has now been exported. Yep, and so if you want to go and find it and then yep. open it up, we'll, we'll preview it a little bit later. But right now I'm going to take over the share. Okay. And what you can see here is the Stephen Colbert show from a little while ago. Making complex. In fact, this was before the last uh, the, the Donald Trump, Hillary, Hillary Clinton presidential campaign when we put this story together. Uh, this is at the beginning of, the, of this campaign, so let's have a listen. <laughs> so I mean, you, can, you can look at that in your own time and see the rest of it, but it gives you an example of how Character Animator is being used in, in the television industry. And with the Stephen Colbert show, they're using it constantly all these different characters come into the show and he makes it really fun. In fact, I was watching Channel 10, it was a couple of years ago now, and they actually they actually had a news service done with digital puppets using Character Animator. And it was the news. So it was the day's news being presented by digital puppets. And it just shows you the power of this tool. Uh, and it just yeah, blows me away. All right, Abigail, how's your finished product looking like? Do you want to share um, your screen? And yeah, I've got it open. So we will give it a go. Hopefully I can get the audio to work. Okay. Hi, it's Chloe in South Australia, hoping that you're enjoying Character Animate. Ter. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. How about a round of applause for, for uh, Abigail? That was terrific. All right, you've done really well. I'm just checking the chat, and this is a good time now to be posing any questions and comments. I don't want to get too much more complicated uh, because it can get there, but you you should be able to um, know now where to, where to get support and help and tutorials if you want to go to the end degree with this. There's lots of tutorials you can get to, but I just wanted to get you started because the kids love it. They have so much fun building their little projects. So while the questions are coming in, and Gemma is saying, looks great so far. Excellent. Good. And Carter is typing away. We'll let that all happen. And maybe, Abigail, if you can keep an eye on the chat, I'm going to just finish off with some resources. We've we've got 20 minutes left, haven't we, Abigail? Is that correct? Or, or have I got that's, the timing Yeah, right? no, that's right. Okay. Um, someone's asking about the background. How did you add the background? Can you show it again? That's a good idea. Okay. Abigail, yep. do you remember what to do? Uh, I'll give it a go. So I went to File and Import. I then found the photo, so I'll just pick a different one. It won't look good, but it's just the demonstrating. And then once that appeared, I went over to uh, over to where the properties are, 
And I no, other side. No, other, other side. side. I went That's under it. project and I yeah. dragged that in. And that's how you bring in an image or a background. And of course, to be a background, you'd have to then do what Abigail's doing now, and that is bring it to the base of your timeline, because whatever's on the top of the timeline will always be in front. And I presume I can get rid of it by right. So if you know a little support. bit about. You know a little bit about Premiere Pro or After Effects, you've got all those similar tools that allow you to make it invisible or have some sort of control over it. So hopefully that's been helpful. And keep firing away the questions if you need to, and uh, Abigail will interrupt me. But I want to give you some resources so that you can learn more, but more importantly, share these with your students and colleagues. So I'll take over the share now, Abigail, for a second. And this set of tutorials here, bit.ly slash edgy tips. In fact, I'm going to grab that. Oops, I think Donald Trump again. I'm going to grab that whole URL, put it into the chat for those who are with us live, so that you can get instant access to it. Uh, but that's a series of tutorials that I created on Character Animator that I'm very happy for you to download. It's on Vimeo, so you can just click the download button, get the full version, put it into your learning management system so you, your students can have instant access to it or just link to it from Vimeo, that's fine as well. They are a little bit old, but they are still quite relevant to what the product looks like at the moment. There's two parts to it. The first part is uh, a lot of it is that um, animation that I played you at the start with me talking to the puppets and the puppets explaining what character animator is too. So if you want to get a copy of that video, it's available through that first part of these tutorials. The second set of tutorials here are the link down at the bottom, and I'm going to grab that link as well for you. These are the official Adobe Help Center tutorials that relate to character animator. And hopefully that's still an active link. I haven't put the HTTP on it. So if you want to do that manually, HTTP colon slash slash, then that'll become a live link. And they're, 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 yeah, they're the official tutorials that could be very helpful for you. I do have a film festival that I'd like to promote in a minute once uh, we've finished talking about character animator, because a number of the films coming through this festival will be animations made with Adobe Character Animator that students in grade five, six, seven, up to year 12 are making and uh, putting into this festival. Otherwise, they're just real life films as well, short little one to two minute films. And we'll talk about that film festival in a minute. Abigail, is there anything else I need to cover according to the chat? No, um, there's no more new questions coming through at the moment. Okay. Well, hopefully that's been helpful and you've had a bit of a uh, an idea. I've um, actually made a little video to promote this film festival and I made it with Adobe Character Animator and Premiere Pro, but I could have used Premiere Rush to make it as well because Premiere Rush has four layers of video that you can play with. So I'm on one layer and the character Rob the Robot's on another layer. And uh, I used a green screen to key myself out. And of course, Rob, I just exported with Alpha, so no need to use a green screen there. And this is what came about. Oops, it put too fast. Hi folks, I'm Tim from Adobe. And I'm Rob the Robot. Get your cameras, microphones, tripods and Adobe apps ready for the Regeneration, Regeneration International Short Film, Film Competition, Competition with, with Adobe. Adobe. This competition is part of the 2022 Regeneration Youth Festival, which is focused on building a resilient and empowered future. Tim, what do the students need to do to enter this competition? Good question, Rob. The students need to organise a small group of preferably three to five and plan, film and edit a short film that goes for between one and two minutes based on the theme of building resilience and empowerment for creating the world we all wish to live in with a focus on sustainability and a reference to at least one of the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. Can it be an animation? Sure can, Rob. 
What about a mix of real life like me and animation like you? Yes, absolutely. I mean, what do you mean like an animation like me? I mean, you're the animation in our relationship. There are two main age categories for this film competition. Years five to nine students, about aged 10 to 14, and years 10 to 12 students, about aged 15 to 18. Winning entries from each section will be showcased at the Regeneration Festival on Friday the 3rd of June at the Immigration Museum in Melbourne and live streamed out to those who live outside of Melbourne. The films, or animations, need to be edited with at least one of the following Adobe products. The new Creative Cloud Express, formerly known as Adobe Spark. Which is free for all schools. Adobe Premiere Rush. Which is also free for all schools. Adobe Animate, which is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud and available in most schools. Premiere Pro, the ultimate video editing solution used by professionals and also available in most schools. After Effects, which is also a full-on professional editing and video compositing tool. My all-time favourite Adobe tool, Character Animator for real-time animation. I don't know where I'd be without Adobe Character Animator. You could even use Adobe Photoshop to help make your film or animation. A list of all the criteria and other information about how to enter can be found via this QR code. Take careful note that the registration form needs to be completed by a teacher and all registrations need to be in by Friday the 15th of April. The films and animations need to be submitted before Friday the 13th of May to allow the international panel of judges time to select which films will be showcased at the festival. It's going to pause it because the dates have all changed since I made this particular film. The film festival is now happening in August, and so we've got more time. We've got till I think mid-July or something to get them in. So check out the link, and that'll give you the the updates of the dates and more information. And it'd be great to get some South Australian films in. At the moment, I've got quite a few from New South Wales, some from Victoria, some from New Zealand, some from Queensland, even some from Northern Territory. I don't think I've got any from South Australia just yet, so it'd be lovely. I've got quite a few from Southeast Asia too, so it's very much an international um, event. And let's see what else we've got. We've got a summit coming up too, and this is going to be amazing on the 28th of September. It's a school holiday day, and I'll have all my presenters in the Sydney office, the Adobe office, and they'll be presenting out to thousands of teachers all over the Asia-Pacific region. And then they'll be running workshops, so you get to choose which area you want to go into, and you can uh, go into a whole range of different breakouts uh, that'll be beaming out of Sydney. And uh, the keynote presenter is Dr. Tim Patston, who is Australia's leading researcher in the area of creativity and innovation. And it'd be worth going to the summit just to hear him because he's really amazing. And I think I've got a, no, I haven't got a video on that, but the last thing I wanna do is actually, I wanna give you the link to the summit. So I think I've got that as a live link. Yes, I do. I'm gonna copy that and paste that into the chat. But those of you watching the recording, you can see that on the slide at the moment. There it is for those who are with us live. Uh, good. I think Abigail's just put in the new date for the film competition. Thank you, Abigail. And the last thing I want to do is, again, was made with Character Animator. Uh, and this is Rob the Robot. Again, he's going to share some key resources for you. As, as he shares them, I'm going to put them into the chat. And then we'll have some time for Q&A, and we might finish a little bit earlier tonight. So over to you, Rob. Hi there, it's Rob the Robot here from the Adobe Education team. Thank you for being involved with this Adobe in Education event. On behalf of the team, I would like to share some follow-up resources that will not only benefit you, but also your colleagues and wider education networks. Use this QR code or link to find out more about the Adobe Creative Educator Program. This is a badging program that involves multiple levels. To obtain the level one badge, you need to do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange. The focus of this course is creativity in education rather than Adobe. You don't need to be an Adobe expert or even a regular Adobe user to get your level one badge. Inject Creativity Live 
is a live and on-demand show on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. It is recorded every second Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Time during the school terms. Each show features a practical demo from a teacher who is an Adobe Education Leader. The demo is of a practical Adobe application and how that teacher is using it in the classroom. Each show also features a thought piece from a leading education thought leader. The show also features me. Let your colleagues know about Inject Creativity Live and join the live audience every second Wednesday night. This QI link take you to our contact form. Use this form to make sure you are on the email lists for our monthly updates for Australasian teachers. This QR and link takes you to the Australasian Adobe in Education coming events site to keep you and your colleagues informed with the wide range of professional learning opportunities that are freely available to all educators in any curriculum area and level. We hope you enjoyed this session. Please do share what you've learned with your colleagues and wider education networks. And I will see you next time. Bye for now. Bye, Rob. Thank you very much, Rob. And thank you, Abigail, for doing the bulk of the hard work in this particular webinar. And uh, you did that really successfully, so I'm glad. In fact, I might even do that in future, Abigail. <laughs> I don't know about that, Tim. I think it's good when you're in the driver's seat. But thank you, everyone that joined us live for um, putting up with the few technical issues that we um, experienced. But uh, hopefully uh, it shows you some methods for coping when, when things go wrong as well. So thank you so much, Tim, for tonight's session. Um, it's such a great fun program to use and uh, hopefully those that have joined us tonight and those that are watching again will be able to find some uses for it with your students. I'm happy to hang around for a couple of minutes if people want to have a chat even when we stop the recording if you want to chat offline I'm happy to hang around otherwise we'll see you at the next one. Abigail do we know when the next one is? Yes so the next session is on the 23rd of June, so and that's topic? week eight, and the topic, now you've put me on the spot, mm. the topic is designing mobile apps at the speed of thought with Adobe XD. Excellent. So if you have, yeah, if you haven't seen XD before and you join us for that one, you're in for a treat because it's uh, an amazing product, I think. And my colleague Brian Chow is down to do that. And he's not very well at the moment, Abigail, and hopefully he'll be fully improved by then. So he ha he lost his he's lost his voice for a couple of weeks, poor poor man. He's very hard to do his job without a voice. So if he can't make it, then I'll do that session. But uh, that's going to be a wonderful session to come to. Okay. Well, I might stop the recording here. So thanks again, those of you that joined us live, and thanks again, Tim. Thanks, Abigail. Bye, everybody.